Hello and welcome to another class of ABM Evolved Sciences. This is Abhishek with you. So today I'll be talking about chicken pox and its complicated form that is singles, how it forms, that is pathogenesis, diagnosis and treatment. So let's start. So chicken pox diagnosed or manifested by the vesicle formation around the skin all over your body. Now chicken pox is an acute viral infection. It's caused by the virus named varicella zoster. The varicella zoster virus is a double stranded DNA virus made up to two segments that is large and small segments. A member of herpes virus group, primary infection results in the varicella. That is if you are infected by the virus for the first time, that is primary infection which is caused by the varicella zoster virus. If it is a recurrent infection means if it is again you have infected with the same virus and in a different form that is called herpes zoster or singles. Now, pathogenesis of uh, varicella. So, day 0 to day 3, that is infection of mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, viral replication in regional lymph nodes. Day 4 to day 6, primary viremia, viral replication in liver, spleen, and other organs. Day 10 to 12, secondary viremia, that is all over your body and the peripheral sections, and all, all the organs are filled with viruses. And day 14, there will be visible patches or vesicular rash appears on the skin. So day 14 is the day. The stages of chicken pox. So it forms and the incubation period I have told you that is 14 to 17 days differs from individual to individual. Now the stages of this infection and recovery there are prodrome, vesicles, pustules, and scabs and recovery. So these are the few stages through which you have to go if you are infected with chicken pox. Prodrome situation tells us about the fever and malaise, the vesicle formation, then pustules and scales, there is a dried form, and then recovery process starts. So, this kind of uh, stages of chickenpox will be encountered in the diseased individuals. The lessons if you can see that uh, the visual, you can visualize that the skin is showing you the vesicles which are filled with fluids which are highly contagious and contains the numerous numbers of viruses. Now each lesson progress through a series of characteristic stages over about a week. Papules and vesicles develop into pustules which then crust over prior to healing. A prominent feature of chickenpox is the development of several crops or spots. The peak of the illness three to four days after first appearance of the rash. There are lessons at all stages of development from new vesicles. The transmission is a very important part of chicken pox where how you can get chicken pox easily and how you can avoid it. So you have to know the transmission process. So it can be occurred by inhaling virus containing particles trapped in tiny droplets released into the air from nose or throat of an infected person. The virus enters the body by infecting cells in the respiratory tract it spreads to many other parts of the body including the skin where it causes the characteristic rash. The person with chicken pox is contagious one to two days before the rash appears and until all blisters have formed scabs. So it takes from 10 to 21 days after contact with an infected person for someone to develop the chicken pox. So as you can see it is a highly contagious disease. Now herpes zoster or singles. It is a recurrent infection of the virus where the dormant virus which is kept in your body in the nerve ganglions again reactivated due to some of the reasons and can travel through the nerve fiber to the skin and they are they form the blisters or the vesicles in a severe form. Reactivation of varicella zoster virus associated with aging, immunosuppression, intrauterine exposure, varicella at less than 18 months of age and psychological stresses. So complications due to the disease, I can say that bacterial infection, oppilation, CNS manifestation that is central nervous system is affected very much. Pneumonia rare in children though it may happen, hospitalization occurs in 3 per 100 cases and death per 60 cases, 60,000 cases. So can you get chicken pox more than once? The answer is yes. But it is uncommon to do so. For most people, one infection is thought to confer lifelong immunity. But it can differ from individual to individual. So that's why some individuals may be infected with the same virus again or more than once. 
Now, how you can manage the disease if you are infected with the disease? So, get some antipyretic medicines, avoiding dehydration, cold baths, and soothing lotions. Fingernails trimmed short because if you are uh, suffering from severe itching, then you will itch the uh, vesicles, and you will be there will be chances of infection there, and the chances of transmission also to other persons. Some drugs like acetaminophen can be used, but it is very uh, difficult to say which patient should be given this drug so definitely go for a medical advice now there are calamine lotions avinovals may help relieve some of the aging process coming to management so when it is necessary to go to the doctor for treatment there is if a fever lasts longer than four days or rises over one due to the Fahrenheit lesions, which becomes very red, warm, and tender, or is leaking pus, may mean there is a bacterial infection. Lethargy, difficulty walking, stiff neck, severe vomiting, difficulty breathing, and severe cough. Complications from varicella infections: there are a few uh, more complications which can happen if you are infected with this virus, like bacterial infection of the vesicles or the patches which form due to the virus may cause septicemia, toxic shock syndrome, necrotizing fasciitis, osteomyelitis, bacterial pneumonia and septic arthritis. These are very complex situations which need to advice. Coming to laboratory diagnosis, there are several diagnostic processes through which you can get or you, the proper information about the disease. So, you can have to isolate the vesicular fluid, stain smears, or vesicular scraping, serology test for varicella, IgM antibodies, ELISA, latex, agglutination, useful in screening for varicella immunity. So, these are the few tests through which you can be very, very confirmed. Now, coming to treatment, there is no such drug which will reduce or which will eliminate the virus, but there are vaccine enhancement or vaccine approach which is very useful in preventing the disease. So, two vaccines containing varicella virus are licensed for US uh, Federation and uh, Varivax and Procad are those viruses, uh, sorry, vaccines. So, Varivax is a single antigen varicella vaccine and Procad is a combination of measles, mumps, rubella and varicella which will help you in preventing more diseases. So, it's a very popular vaccine and available worldwide. So another and last approach of treatment is the varicella just immunoglobulin which is a passive form of immunity that is ready-made antibodies pushed to the uh, you cannot say infected but the person which will be conferring the symptoms due to some kind of exposure to the patient. So it has some conditions like immunocompromised persons, newborn of mothers with onset of 5 days before two days after birth, premature infants with postnatal exposure, and susceptible adults and pregnant women are these are the free conditions where you can use the varicella just immunoglobulin and should be less than 96 hours after exposure. So it's a very important part of treatment for varicella. So if you like my video, please give a thumbs up, uh, do share my video and subscribe to my channel for more video like this. Thank you.